Uh, welcome everybody. Before we start the presentation, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tim Erlings, 23 years old, studying MSc Marketing at the University of South Wales. And in this group assignment, I was the group leader. Um, in the next 45 to 50 minutes, we're going to give a critical reflection of our uh, group process. And uh, I think we can look back on a very interesting, but most of all, very educative uh, group assignment. Now, first of all, uh, we have a couple of subjects we would like to talk about. First one is uh, leadership. I'm going to start with a presentation about this topic. The second uh, presentation uh, given by Mohammed Abu Bakr is the uh, topic time management. After time management, we will get a presentation about motivation given by uh, Manish. After that, we get a presentation of Long uh, about communication. And last but not least, we will get a presentation from Abdullah uh, talking about the ethical issues within our group project. Now, uh, first of all, uh, we designed a theoretical framework uh, about uh, this reflective presentation, starting with the Gibbs reflective cycle. Uh, as you can see, it's a reflective cycle starting with description, feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and last but not least, an action plan. And to um, explain this uh, reflective cycle, we use uh, Tuckman's group development model to, um, to show uh, how we grow in our uh, uh, group process. Now, leadership. Uh, first of all, uh, according to uh, Mary Kipaka Follett, leadership is the art of getting things done through people. And it's all about results, getting results through people with other people. Now, according to Bayes and Stockdale, uh, leadership is a very broad theory with a lot of different uh, perspectives, a lot of different theories, and a lot of different styles. Uh, our perception about leadership wasn't that, uh, wasn't that good. We didn't have uh, much of theoretical background, which it made it hard for us to choose a leadership style. So we had to do research. Uh, we had to do research, we, we, we've shown, uh, seen lots of uh, models, uh, theories, and combined with the lectures of uh, Managing Professional Development given by Leslie Long, we uh, created a better uh, understanding about the uh, theories within leadership. To give an example, um, we use this model to choose our leadership style. I will explain this model first. Uh, first, you can see the three uh, uh, power styles, the three most important styles within leadership. First of all, the autocratic leadership style, followed by the participative leadership style, and last, the free reign leadership style. On the other end of the model, you can see the emphasis of the leader, the emphasis of the whole group, and the emphasis of the employees. Here you can see um, the leader has the most emphasis within the project, here you can see the whole group is very important within the project and uh, the free reign leadership styles, uh, the employee is very important within uh, this leadership style. We chose for a very uh, participative leadership style. Um, uh, first, we chose shared leadership, but uh, we used this shared leadership in the first stages of our group development. But we noticed this wasn't the perfect leadership style for us. Uh, to give an example, during the group meetings, uh, all of us were uh, employees and leaders at the same time. We didn't have a, a, a leader within the group, uh, which made it very hard to make decisions. And when we wanted feedback, we didn't know who to ask. So we noticed there was a need for uh, a leader within the group. Um, this took us maybe a week, maybe uh, up to two weeks to uh, notice this problem. But when we noticed the problem, we uh, decided to change the leadership style into a more participative, participative leadership style, which is shown here. And to illustrate this process, I made a, a model. Uh, like I told, we started the group process as uh, the group members uh, and leaders at the same time, so there was no typical leader. And we changed this into a process whereby uh, the leader was part of the group, but he was uh, responsible for decision making and uh, give feedback and uh, stuff like that. And to give an example of this, during the meetings uh, after, 
uh, we worked uh, way much more efficient, uh, looking at time efficiency uh, and other topics. It was uh, much more efficient than before. Now, now it's time to analyze. Uh, we're gonna give, uh, we're gonna examine, examine, examine the experience in depth. Uh, this using uh, Tuckman's group uh, development model, and uh, within this examination, we uh, notice we use uh, a different form of reflection, and uh, this is where I'm going to talk about in the next two slides. Now, first of all, the uh, Tuckman's model. Um, like I told, uh, in the first stage, in the forming stage, it took a long time for us, maybe on, the, on one week, one week and a half, to uh, get used to each other, and most important, uh, to know the purpose of the assignment. We didn't know what to do, we just, we just uh, tried to get to know each other better, uh, but we didn't have a clear understanding of the assignment. Uh, moving into the storming phase, we, we understood how decisions are made, uh, the purpose of the assignment was clear, and here we choose for the uh, shared leadership style. And like I told, it took us a long time uh, in the storming phase because um, the understanding wasn't that good. Uh, yeah, we, we, we had the leadership style, but it wasn't uh, perfect for us. So we changed this leadership style, but it took us maybe two weeks in the first two uh, stages to get to the norming stage. So looking back at this de development, we can conclude that um, uh, the, the first two stages took us, uh, uh, took us too long time, too much time. Um, yeah, when we moved on to the norming and performing phase with the change of the leadership style, uh, uh, we look back at a much better, a much better uh, uh, development. Now, um, reflection. Uh, there are two types of reflection. Reflection on action, which means uh, reflection after the group project and reflection in action, which uh, we used. Uh, this is reflection uh, while doing it, during the group process. Uh, like I told, we, uh, we used reflection in action because we noticed the leadership style wasn't the perfect leadership, leadership style for us, so we changed it into another leadership style, which resulted uh, in a much better uh, group process, group development. More about this model later in the presentation. Uh, conclusion. Uh, starting the conclusion with uh, um, uh, Manish's model of money, motivation. Uh, in the next presentation, Manish will tell more about this. But we can conclude that in the beginning of our uh, assignment, in the, in the forming stage, our motivation was very high. But the efficiency, according to leadership, was very low because we chose the, uh, chose the wrong leadership style. Um, why did we choose the wrong leadership style? And this was because uh, we made the decision for shared leadership too fast. Um, we had knowledge uh, and we had some theoretical background, but this was not enough to choose the perfect leadership style for us. Um, and maybe this was because we weren't uh, aware enough of the importance of leadership. Uh, in this case, the importance of the leadership style which we should choose. And um, if we look back at the process, we choose reflection and action. We use reflection and action to, uh, uh, to, uh, to make a better group process. But this is not necessary when we uh, were more aware of, the, of, of these uh, bullet points. So uh, in the future, it's, um, it's important to prevent similar mistakes within the group process. So we have to prevent, uh, we have to use reflection and action. Uh, we're going to do this by use this experience. This was a very uh, educative uh, experience for us. Uh, and we have to be more aware of the importance of leadership styles uh, within the next uh, assignments or next group projects. Uh, and we have to get a better uh, theoretical background before we make decisions according to leadership styles. Uh, for this presentation, I used uh, a couple of uh, references shown here. And uh, now I would like to give the word to uh, Mohammed and tell about uh, time management. Greetings, my name is Mohammed Abu Kar. I'm doing my MBA course in Southwell University in February cohort. So I'll be illustrating about time management as a part of group, group process reflection.
so i'll be discussing about uh delegation and self regulation as a main part because we took these two steps for to increase our time efficiency now before illustrating about time management we we'll look into the question what is a time time is a valuable resources because it is our life which is measured in minutes hours or days or months that is why people say that time is money so now utilizing that time in a proper way to achieve that particular team goal or particular any goal is called time management moving into the model the theoretical models which our team or we choose to illustrate about the experiences and the situations uh, faced by the group in team development process the two theories which we took is gibbs reflective cycle and technical team development theory now this is a, this is a model which we designed by combining two theories which is gibbs model and techman's model on my right side you can see a uh, gibbs model which is description feelings evaluations analysis conclusion and action plan and the, on the top these are the different stages of group development which is forming storming norming and performing so the forming stage was uh, just coming to discuss about the purpose of our uh, team work meetings everything so we didn't take much consider consideration about time management but in storming stage what we as a team did was we delegated the work which is we divided the works between members so when we uh, when we came to know that the quality of work got is poor then we took consideration of buttons of group reflections which is <clears throat> why and how now what so at that time only uh, we <clears throat> came to know about the self regulation is much important aspect for the delegate self regulation which means that which means that regulating yourself so when we delegate the work if a member does not took that topic as a serious then it won't give a better outcome so at that time we came up with time management to improve the self regulations so in <clears throat> norm stage we took consideration of Belvin's team role to uh, to allocate a person about this responsibility of time management so when we consider the result of Belvin's team role reflection i was chosen as a person to manage the timing so what i did was to reduce the duration of meeting to increase the efficiency of time because the reason was when we used to have weekly meeting we used to keep the meeting for 3 to 4 hours but the delegation of works reduced the stress of our members so it led the member to find out some time to have a uh, fun or personal reasons so when we reduce the time of duration of meeting uh what we noticed in performing stage was it increased the involvement of members it increased the efficient utilizing it it upsurge or increased the utilization of time by members so that is the that is a place where we realize that time management is uh is an important aspect in team team work as it can uh give a structure of team 
time management or how to utilize the time in efficient and effective way. So now I'm moving into conclusion. So what I have discussed about time management, how it reduces the stress, how it upsurge the efficiencies. So the two theories which we took to illustrate the experiences or to reflect our group process was Gibbs uh, reflective cycle and Techman's Techman's team development theory. So in performance stage, according to Bottom's reflective cycle, we uh, we thought about how does this time management uh, led our team to a success. So we came up few bullets, which is delegation of teamwork self-regulations, arranging meeting in a proper way and allocating deadlines for the uh, activities or tasks which were given to each member. So these are the actions which we took to increase or upsurge the time efficiency. In perform for performing stage, we also realized that delegation and self-regulation was very important in group development. So the, the action which we took to increase our efficiency was reduce duration of meeting. So that is one action which we took to increase the or upsurge the efficiency of utilization of time. So in future, I would like to or I would suggest to consider time management as very important aspect in my in a teamwork or as a personal job. Last not least, action plan. The actions which we took, which we would suggest in future in teamwork or working as a personal job, which are arranging meeting efficiently, recording meeting minutes. We don't we didn't record meetings because we were using communicate, social communication network to communicate, communicate with each other. So we would like to record the meeting minutes in future to track the activities which was happened in every meeting. It would help us to improvise our team development and delegate work within members based on their skills. I, we think that it would improvise the input of each members. And the other thing which we, will, we would suggest is like coming, on, coming up with motiva motivation techniques to improvise the self-regulations and to reduce or uh, <clears throat> reduce and increase the duration of meeting based on the topic because some topic needs more time to discuss, some topic needs less time to discuss. So according to the topic, we would like to uh, adjust the timing or duration of meeting. Last but not least, I would like to conclude by saying by saying a quote uh, written by Carlson Berg, which is, "Time is the most valuable coin in your life, and you and you alone will determine how that coin will be spent. Be careful that you do not let other people spend it for you." So this says that I w I should consider time management very important aspect in personal life also not only in uh, teamwork or in a job to achieve the goal it will also help a person to achieve his personal goals in his life thank you very much hi my name is manish muji uh, this chapter of the presentation is going to uh, is based on the motivation of the group processes among us as the 18 now a brief two brief uh, definitions of motivation are listed above here First one is the perspective, uh, business perspective, uh, a definition of motivation. This states the, the ways in which firms encourage employees to give their best. It's basically the approaches taken by firms in order to uh, encourage the staff to work to their maximum potential. Second is the psychological uh, definition of motivation. This states it is the reason or reasons for acting or behaving in a particular way. 
Moving on. There are various benefits of, of motivation. Um, in a bit, looking at it as a business student, we're looking at increased output, improved quality, and higher level of retention. Now, most successful and efficient teams uh, take these factors into consideration as they know for them to be successful, they need all these factors, these three factors right here. So, for, to begin with, increased output, which this normally comes from uh, an, increase, an increased effort from the employees uh, of, the, of the firm, as, as they feel that, um, the, the, as they feel motivated, they feel like putting in an extra, work, uh, extra amount of effort in um, whatever processes or roles they have been given to do which leads to an increased output uh, uh, for the whole firm. Second is improved quality. This results from staff putting their heart into the work that they are given to them. Uh, at the, uh, as a result, staff end up uh, taking much care and uh, investing more time in the product. Uh, for example, it could be the finishing of a product or just the basic assembling of a product. But overall, uh, producers uh, great quality of which uh, satisfies uh, the customer's needs. Last, last but not least is the higher level of retention. As a firm, we try our best uh, to avoid uh, losing any members of the, of, uh, of, uh, of the organization as each member is valued as a, as a family. But uh, <coughs> uh, motivation acts as a, as a very, very important uh, catalyst to this uh, benefit, uh, as it as it uh, enables the firm to to be on a safer side, and it saves the cost of, of the firm rather than the firm continually uh, unemploying uh, uh, staff and uh, re-employing uh, new staff and training them, which is quite long and uh, time-consuming. But if the employees are highly motivated, the chances of them leaving the work is less, which is a good thing for the business. Moving on, I'm now going to look at uh, Tuckman and motivation. Uh, the level of motivation among us as a team uh, fluctuated during various stages of, our, of the team development. As you can see in the forming stage, uh, the, the level of motivation, which is on the y-axis, is really high. And, um, uh, uh, as you can see, the Tuckman stages have been listed below. Uh, the forming stage, the no uh, storming stage, the norming stage, and the performing stage. During the storming stage, the level of motivation was really high, as uh, we were still forming as a group, and uh, we had no idea about the roles we were going to do, or um, the difficulty of the work. Uh, so we were, we were quite highly uh, motivated and ready to do the work, and excited to see what, what uh, uh, was in store for us. Coming down to the storming stage, the level of motivation began to, to fall. This is because uh, we realized uh, that we had not been putting in the right amount of effort um, looking at the time we were given, as we, we, we began to take the assignment a bit lightly than we were supposed to take it, which is a big problem for most teams. Um, it was only until the norming stage as the, as, as the motivation really began to go uh, low, um, that we, we discussed this and decided that we need to now put in an, uh, a higher amount of effort into our work as um, the, realizing this too late has demotivated us to complete the work. Regardless of that, we realized that there are various uh, factors that were motivating us as a team. Now, these factors uh, uh, in relation to Frederick uh, Herzberg's motivators and hygiene factors uh, are what motivated us. So to start with, Frederick Herzberg uh, concluded that man has two level of needs, uh, uh, has two uh, sets of needs. Uh, one of them is uh, lower level of needs as an animal to avoid pain and deprivation. And the second one is a higher level of needs as a human being to grow psychologically. As you can see here, the hygiene factors are the lower level needs and the motivators are the higher level needs. As a team, we realized that each of us were acting as motivators for each other. This happened in such a way that we've got our leader, Tim, 
Um, what we would do after every meeting, we'll, he, he would delegate some work to us, of which we have all agreed and discussed on. But on the next meeting, he would actually look at this work and ensure that the work is, is well done and is of good quality. These come under sense of achievement. So for example, as soon as team would look at my work and say, okay, I think the work is good enough, you can take it forward, we can take it forward and, and add it to the whole uh, group uh, report or presentation or whatever sort of work it was, I would feel a sense of achievement to say, okay, I've completed my part of the work and I would know that he's recognized the amount of effort I've put in and the work itself is of good quality. Most importantly, each member of the group knew that we had a big responsibility even though we only had one team leader. But uh, <clears throat> overall, we, we, we knew that submitting these assignments and uh, these pieces of work led to advancement and growth uh, individually for us as professionals. On the other hand, the hygiene factors include group policy and administration, which is also normal, which is normally known as company policy, uh, supervision, work relationships, status and security. The group policies are pretty, well, have been pretty uh, simple and straightforward and not really strict, so everyone has been happy with that. Uh, supervision, Tim has been very good with the supervision, always making sure to, we do the work on time and uh, uh, give it in uh, before the deadlines. And of course status and security, we all know we are students, we all know that we are in a good group of which is uh, likely to, which has got the capabilities to uh, get good grades and work very efficiently and effectively. To conclude, we realized that um, uh, taking, taking, a, taking an assessment too lightly can lead to uh, complications uh, in the completion of the project as, it, as, um, as we, we, we tended to, to be over, overconfident, in other words. So, uh, we learned that uh, Next time we'll need to, to basically consider all assessments uh, to have the same complexity, level of complexity, uh, uh, rather than looking at one to be a, a simpler assignment than the other. Uh, and that's what we learned to take forward uh, from this assessment. Hi everyone, I'm Jin Chang Long. Today, I'm going to talk about our team's reflection of communication. It is widely agreement that communication is very important in teamwork. So, how to effectively communicate in a team is a significant issue. At the first, I'm going to give everyone an overview of Gibbs Reflector Cycle. As you can see, this cycle consists of six steps. Description, Feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and action plan. For this cycle, the A is to help people learn from experience. Then let's move on to the next slide. This is a description step where we can describe our team's communication process. Sometimes our team work is accomplished through relatively smooth and easy communication. However, there are other times when it was not so successful because of some problems with communication. And then, I want to describe how our team communicated. There are two primary pathways of communication, internet and real life. Besides weekly meetings, we also use Facebook and WhatsApp to communicate. According to Turkman, a group goes through several developmental stages, and we had different feelings in each of the stages. In the forming stage, team may lack rapper. We couldn't communicate effectively. In the storming stage, we became more familiar with each other and gradually started to get along. 
in the norming stage, we established some closer bounds. We even started talking about something interesting topics. In the performing stage, we could communicate fast and effectively. So, in short, the whole process of finance is a process of breaking down barriers. However, there are still some barriers within teamwork. But sometimes, we couldn't totally understand teamwork topics. The next step, I'm going to evaluate this process of communication. According to Shannon and Weaver communication theory, process of communication can be evaluated through this visual model. And it emphasizes information is first produced and encoded by sender. The channel is a pathway by which the information is sent. Then, information arrives at a receiver who must uh, to um, decode the information. At the same time, noise is a primary element can, can affect the final information. And the noise can be environmental, emotional, physical, or other factors. In order to counteract the effect of noise, feedback can be used to clarify and uh, uh, improve accuracy of information. So, reducing effect of noise and uh, keeping feedback are very important within teamwork. And the next, some of our team's example are put into this model and other life. In group communication test, Mahamai described a paper with a smiley face, but no need to draw what Mahamai described. In this case, Mahamai was a sender. He said, draw a square, but no misunderstood due to different language degrees. Actually, no wrote the words draw a square instead of drawing a shape. So, uh, increasing language level it was a feasible situation in this case. And it should be noted that there was no feedback. Therefore, result of this test didn't conform to expectation. Another example is about our team's weekly meetings. In the weekly meetings, sometimes teammates might misunderstand meeting content. However, teammates could communicate on Facebook and WhatsApp to clarify the information. The team leader produced teamwork topics, but due to environmental or emotional factors, a teammate couldn't understand. For example, the environment is very noisy, or on that day, Someone was very depressed and couldn't concentrate. After that, teammates can give feedback to a leader through Facebook and WhatsApp. Within the process of feedback, some noise might appear, like poor internet connection or some problems with mobile equipment. All this noise can affect can reduce effectiveness of communication. So we should keep a um, rational emotion and find a place where it's suitable for team meeting. And we also need to keep the internet and the mobile equipment working well. In conclusion, Success of all teamwork is based on com effective communication. Our team's communication was relatively successful. However, the process of communication was not effective enough. It means we still need to constantly improve. In the future, as an action plan for us, the first thing in communication issue 
is identify process of communication. Try to make process simple and clear. Second is determine noise in communication. Try to find out what noise might appear in communication. Third is reducing effect of noise. Six solutions to reduce effect of noise. And finally, continuing to provide feedback to each other. Make sure the information is received in exact way the sender intended. So there are a lot of a lot of other ways can increase can increase effectiveness of communication. But as a team, it should be found a suitable way to implement. So this is our team's reflection of communication. And the next, Abdullah will introduce ethical issue. Thank you. Hi everybody. My name is Abdullah Jinibi. I am from Oman. I studied uh, economic and now I'm studying in South Wales University of MSc Management. The, sh the section below product of employee gives reflection cycle along with Dokman from work. To present uh, a reflection in ethical uses of worrying a group. As discussed in the early section, we used the Tokman model 1965 during the first phase of group formation. The Gibbs reflective cycle. Description, billing, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, active plan. The first one is description. What happened and uh, when and where did thing happen? Billing, the what were you thinking and feeling. Evaluation, what was good and bad about this experience. Analysis, what sense can you make in the situation. Conclusion, what else could you have done. And last one is action plan, let's uh, take action. Two months from work is uh, forming, storming, norming, and performing. During the first phase of group forming, it was a challenging process in cloud ethics. The building experience were uh, high and law because it was quite a challenge management ethics. But at the same time, a significant learning experience because we were all new the group and uh, getting to know each other. On the another hand, and the second stage of Tokman framework, storming state, where we elected work at the group work required ethics in terms of commitment towards the role and work as it is. Advocates towards using the work of other academic and researchers. And uh, on another hand, is uh, in the third stage of Tokman from work, norming state. 
when people stretch, start to result their different and value colleges strengths. However, not math. How challenging it was a learning experience. experience. Because as a group we come together, because uh, as a group we come together and uh, started a plan to be ethical towards our group member. Further, we are ethical towards the environment we are working in ethics towards using the work of earlier research and the very important one is respect for group member and other again and the research It become a most imperative, imperative for the group to oversee the management of ethics. It is important to conduct ethics based on the principle of cluster equality and fairness will always involve in their research. By the time we reach the fourth stage, the fourth stage is performing. Performing we result that ethics is in a central community of conducting any research and become even more important when more than one person is working to achieve the same project objective. This is uh, with me and uh, Thank you for everything.